Hey guys, today I'm, I'm going to be talking about the V slide plates, exercise one in chapter six. And I'm, I want to do a couple things. One is to set up um, the work area first, then we'll begin the drawing. Okay. First of all, please make sure that you're in um, inches. Go to edit document units here and make sure you're in inches because it says that it is in inches and these are small numbers. Remember that. So dimensions are in inches. Make sure standing draft, st drafting standard is ANSI, not ISO or anything else. It'd be ANSI all the time, every day, okay? Also, um, I want to talk about setting up um, mouse gestures. When I begin a sketch um, like this, and I'm in the front plane here, um, one thing is that if I get turned out of, out of the way, how do I get back? Typically, you go up here to this and try to go back here and click on this, and now you're, that works, okay? Another quick way to do that is to have a mouse gesture that as I right click and drag my mouse up, these are my mouse gestures, okay? Right there, I wanna be able to um, go back to a normal two screen, okay? So I'm gonna go to um, tools, down below it says customize, um, mouse gestures, make sure it says eight right here, if not, change it to eight gestures. And then this command right there in the sketch, instead of convert entities, which I don't usually use very often, I'm gonna change that to normal two. So I'm gonna search for Normal two, there it is right there. I'm going to drag it over and drop it on that part right there so that when I right click and move my mouse toward this one, when I'm in a sketch, it'll go normal two every single time. And that's a fast way to do that. So right now I'm in a sketch, right click, move my mouse, normal two, it rotates toward me. Now I'm looking straight at the drawing. That's super helpful and saves a lot of time. Okay, so um, I'm just going to exit sketch. All right, first thing I'm going to save this as. Um, let's go to the desktop and say, um, this is going to be my initials, which this should be yours. Okay, so dd um, underscore uh, v dash plate. Okay, always give it a name when you start a file, so in case you get a corrupted file and lose all your work. Okay, so now it's saved as D, dd v plate. All right, next thing is to look at this drawing and, and realize what it is. It's, it has symmetry across the center, and this, this is a one view drawing. It's a plate, so it's always the front view. One view is always equal to the front view, don't forget that, all right? So let me just go ahead and start this. I'm always gonna, if I'm gonna do a mirror across the symmetry line, which is the middle here, I'm gonna create that first, okay? I'm gonna start in the front view, sketch, um, start with a center line. Um, I'm gonna go from the origin down because kind of the origin is gonna be um, this point right there, okay, where that arc is, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and create this as a basic, kind of a, um, a quick sketch of the basic outline first. I like to do that. Um, I'll bring this down to here and stop, okay? And I notice that there's a couple things about this is I have these two lines here and here are, t are parallel because of the parallel mark there and there. I have a a um, perpendicular mark here and here, that means these two are perpendicular, so 90 degrees. I have tangency here, 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 and here, okay? And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dimensioned things, okay? So first of all, um, good, let's start, let me start with this arc here, and I'm going to go with a, and I changed my mind, I was going to go with three-point arc, but I'm going to use a it's a center point arc because I know where the center is. It's right there. If you do know where the center of something is, use it, okay? I'm going to go next to here to this first point where it's connected. Like this. See how I can get this to go. There it goes. And then it is going to connect in this line here, okay? So I'm looking for a couple things. One, is it connected right there? It is. Is it coincident with this line? It is, and it's on the origin right there. So those, that's done. This has to be a tangent. So click on the point. Choose tangency. And now this little arc here is in position. I'll go ahead and give it a dimension, which is 0.875, enter, there it is. I want to see that it's 0.875 and not reduced, or not um, shown, it's on the, the correct precision. So to change that, go to options up here, and document properties, and units, and let's change the length of basic units to Precision is going to be 0.123 right there, all right? So that's done. Now I can see that's, that's finished, okay? This is already perpendicular. That's fine. I need an arc here and an arc down below. So I'm going to use a sketch fillet because 
Fillets always force tangencies. Please remember that. Fillets always force tangencies between a fillet arc and a line. All right. I'll set up my bottom one, which is a 0.625 enter fillet. I'm going to click on the vertex right there and then check mark that and it's set. Okay. Next one's the top right one, which is 0.875 enter. And it's going to be that vertex right there. And I'll check mark that and that one's done. Those tangents showed up here, 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 and here, which I want. So it saves you time <clears throat> again. All right. Um, this may already be set up, but go ahead and just check. Click on this line here. Use the control key. Choose this line. And you want to force the parallel. And it may already be there. Okay, so now it's forced. And number nine, note is that these two are parallel. That's what we want. All right. Next is um, add some dimensions from here to here. It should be 1.625. And that's good. And then down below from this point or this center point here, the 0.625 radius to this edge here, this line. From this line to that point right there should be one point three seven five enter all right there it is next is the distance from the bottom up to that center point of this arc right there okay where the origin is don't miss where these work these dimensions go a lot of students have a problem with this is that they miss the problem because they don't place the dimensions in the correct position be very careful about that so from this bottom line and notice that i'm when you choose a line rather than a point um let me show you something if i click on a point to a point, this dimension can kind of go at different angles, and I want it to be horizontal. But if I click on the line and the point, it forces it. Oops, sorry, I'm lying. Get out of here, push escape started again. From the line to the point, it forces it to be horizontal. I can't go up here anymore. I can't make it shift, okay? So it kind of forces it. So you don't need to think about it. It's not going to shift on you, even a, even a degree, okay? It's going to be perfect. So. That's the difference. 2.75, enter. All right, cool. And lastly, the distance from the, the where the origin is, the center here, to that center point of the 0.875 radius up there, okay? So from here, or this line, to that point right there is 2.25, enter, okay? That shifts it down, I'll push escape. And now this is all defined, okay? And typically what I'll do is I'll count dimensions just to be sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've got seven, they're all correct. All my relations are in place, it looks good, okay? One quick tip is that um, because I have a center line, I can use the mirror command now and mirror this over. If I select it first like this, then hit the mirror command in the sketch, it automatically mirrors it across the center line and that saves a couple steps. Um, with that command. Okay, so this is all set up here. I'm going to assume this is all good. X my sketch. I'll go ahead and extrude by space. This should be a 0.25. Enter. I always extrude to the back because that means the sketch is on the front. And when I show this in slides, when you show it in slides, you want to show the sketch on the front surface extruding back. I'll show you what I mean. When I finish this now, that's done. If I edit this feature, the feature build, the sketch is on the front, and it's extruding back so I can see the sketch. Otherwise, it's going to be on the back of the model. It won't show as well when you try to show off this in your slides. Okay, that's why. Okay, so this is done. Let's um, change in, um, let's see, in Google Classroom. It says the material, I'm going to right click on this, is ABS PC, which is a plastic, a clear plastic. There it is. And then I believe the um, mass properties, let me go back here. If you go to evaluate and then mass properties, um, the mass should be 0.199, okay? And 0.20 is not the way to show this answer. That would be incorrect, okay, for this accuracy. And then in, in the exam, they may ask you for three points accuracy. And if you just say 0.20, you're gonna get it wrong, all right? So go to options up here. And change this using use custom settings, change the decimal places to three right there. Click OK. And now it's showing that it's 0 0.11, 0 0.199 pounds. Okay, and that's the correct answer. All right. Hope this is hope this has helped. And um, again, please show this correctly in your slides. 
um, showing the um, feature build and the model separately and um, put the title above which is the V plates as long as as well as showing the mass properties like this where you're going to use your snipping tool and just make sure you include this information right here okay and this information shows the name of this right here there's the name of your drawing right there that should show up and the mass weight okay and the center of mouse just because okay those three three things i want to see in your slides all right that is it um that's all i have for now hope you have a good day all right bye